forces of law and order is, in reality, Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow, Cranston is gifted with hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death Prowls at Night. High on the snow-covered Adirondack Mountains, in a tiny trapper's cabin, two men lie sleeping, quietly sleeping. Suddenly, the mournful howling of frightened dogs shatters the stillness of the night. One of the men, alarmed, rises quickly from his bunk and calls out to his horse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. What? Wake up, Pierre. Yeah. What is it? The dog. Something is frightening the dog. What can it be? I don't know. I'm going out to see. Do you wish to take my gun? No, no. I won't need it. Uh, I shall put on my boot. What is wrong with your dog? I will come out and join you in a moment. Why are you hurrying? Can you see anything, Philip? No, that does not seem to be out. Philip! Philip, what is wrong? Help! Help! I'm coming, Philip. Help! Uh, yeah. It's a wolf! Oh. A giant wolf! The creature is killing him! Oh. Save yourself, Pierre! Save yourself! Oh. I must get the gun. The animal is turning on me. I must get the gun. If I can make the cabin, I will... Oh. We've stayed in the village tonight. You mean on account of the snow? No, it's just that I don't like riding through these woods like this. Why, we've done it hundreds of times, Anna. I know, but it's different now. Oh, now, you've been listening to that wolf story, haven't you? Yes, I have. Well, now, that's a lot of nonsense. No, it isn't, John. Too many people have seen him. And what about the bodies they found? Bodies just torn to pieces by a savage beast. Now, Anna, we'll be home any minute now, and you'll be... Listen... What's that? Why, just dogs howling, that's all. Those dogs are frightened. I can tell by the sound. Now, Anna, stop imagining things. You get there, boy. That howling is coming from somewhere behind us. All I can see is dark woods. John! Anna, what is it? The wolf. He's running behind us, following the sleigh. It's the wolf. Great heavens. Oh. Keep that, boy. Keep that, Master, he's gaining on us. Well, we're going as fast as we can. He's right behind us now. Here, take the reins, Anna. I'll deal with him. It's too late, Johnny. He's right beside us. He's going to leave. So bright, Lamar, we could almost go skiing again tonight after dinner. We could have that. How about it, Joe? You've been a guide around here for a long time. Do people ever do any moonlight skiing? Well, they have in the past, Mr. Cranston, but well, I wouldn't advise it tonight. Well, why not, Joe? Well, it wouldn't be safe. Oh, you uh, you mean this wolf scare that's going around? Yeah. <laughs> Joe, I'm surprised at you. I've never heard of a man who's lived in the woods all his life being frightened by any animal. I'm not frightened by any animal. Uh, just a moment. What do you mean, Joe? This beast is not an animal. You mean a human is responsible for all these killings? A human mind is... A human mind in the body of a savage wolf. I don't understand, Joe. Have either of you ever heard of a werewolf? Yes, yes, I've read about them. Werewolf is a man who possesses a power to transform himself into a savage beast. That's right. I believe that the legends about them have all come from Central Europe. I don't think they are legends, Mr. Cranston. I believe they are fact. You see, I was brought up in Central Europe. Oh, now, Joe, you're not asking us to believe that we have a werewolf here in the Adirondacks. <laughs> well, you can believe what you wish, but I know what has been going on. I myself have seen the animal. Its cunning behavior, its ability to appear and disappear at will, its method of killing. There is a werewolf here. I'm sure of it. Well, I, I can't argue with you, Joe. Hey, here's your cabin, Margo. Yes. All right, I'll meet you at the lodge, Lamont, as soon as I'm dressed. All right, I'll see you later. All right. And I'll keep an eye out for the wolf, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Good old 
Joe. You certainly... It's in English, Len. Oh, you surprised me, Marie. Sorry, Mademoiselle. Would you draw a tub for me, please? Uh, oui, Mademoiselle. I have already done so. Oh, good. I trust that you enjoyed your skiing today. Oh, it was wonderful. Will you be wearing this blue dress, Mademoiselle? Yes, that'll be all right. Marie, do you hear those dogs howling? Oui, Mademoiselle. <laughs> Eerie sound, isn't it? Uh, they open now, like that at night, up here, Mendez. I would not worry about it if I were you. Oh, they don't bother me. I was just... Oh, there's someone at the door. Will you see who it is, Marie, yes. please? Good evening. Oh, good evening, Doctor. Who is it, Marie? It is Dr. Mendez, Mendez. He often comes here for the lodge. Oh, does he want to see me? Yes, if I may. Oh, then will you come in? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, you're Miss Lane, I believe? That's right, Doctor. I saw you out skiing today. I wondered if you'd sustained any cuts or bruises that might need attention. <laughs> no, I seem to have come through without a scratch, thank you. Oh, that's fine. Fine. A bit for a rest, are you? Why, yes, sort of. In tired, are you? Well, more in need of a change, I'd say. I see. Then you should not be indulging in such violent exercises. Skiing. You should be resting, relaxing. I suppose you're right. Uh, this is a personal question, I know, Miss Lane. But have you had any medical attention lately? Have I had any? Oh, no. Not in the past six months. I see. Why do you ask, Doctor? Young lady, you are in a very highly nervous state. I make this statement freely because I specialize in such work. I suppose I should not have told you this. No. No, I'm glad you did. Your eyes have a strange look. They are weary. Very weary. Is that not so? Yes. Yes. Sit down, Miss Lane, please. Sit down? Yes. Uh, no, this chair, please. Yes. That's it. Now just relax. Say, Miss Lane, that you are very badly in need of constant medical care for the next few days. Don't you agree with that, Marie? Oui, Doctor. I do. I have a small sanitarium nearby, Miss Lane. An excellent place for you to rest. I suggest that you spend a few days there. Whatever you say, Doctor. Fine. Pack some of Miss Lane's clothes immediately, Marie. We are leaving for the sanitarium at once. <laughs> Jennifer. Well, I was home, like I said. 
All of a sudden, my dog started howling. He was yelling so bad, I got the idea maybe there was someone prowling around the livestock. So you went out to investigate? Yeah. And then what happened? Well, first I looked around. Couldn't see nothing. And all at once, I spotted somebody down in the lower field. It was a girl. A young, tall brunette? I don't know whether she was a brunette or not. She's wearing a white ski suit. And that was Margot, all right? Running through the field in the moonlight. Running real fast. She was. And at her side was what appeared to be a giant gray dog like. Uh, did you call out to her? Didn't have no chance. Before I could even say anything, she disappeared over the side of the hill. Sergeant, there's no time to lose. We must go to this man's farmhouse at once. About him. Where is he now, do you know? No. 
He has gone out. At this time of night? Where did he go? I do not know. Don't you think it odd that he should choose this hour to be out in this mountain wilderness? I do not question the doctor, said he. You came here last night with Miss Lane, did you not? Oh, yes, sir. Why? Why was she brought here? How did he persuade her to come? He did not persuade her. She came at her own free will. You've known Dr. Van Dane before, haven't you? Answer my question. Oui, monsieur. For how long? How long have you known him? What difference does that make? It makes a great deal of difference. I suspect very strongly, Marie, that you aided him in bringing Miss Lane here. She came here willingly, I tell you. She needed a rest. Are you trying to make me believe that she chose to come to a sanitarium where she is the only patient? No. I've just determined that fact by searching the building. I know nothing about that. But you do know something about Dr. Van Dane. More than you're willing to tell me. No. Well... I shall continue to question you until you do. No. No, leave me alone. Where did he come from? What is his background, his place of birth? He was born in Europe. That is all I know. In Central Europe? We, oui, I believe so. That's most revealing. Does Dr. Van Dane often indulge in nocturnal prowling? I do not know. You do know, but you're afraid to tell me. Oh, please. Please, monsieur. Do not ask me any more questions. How does Dr. Van Dane feel about dogs? Does he have any around the house? No, he hates dogs. Then how do you account for the fact that Miss Lane was seen several hours ago running through the fields with what appeared to be a giant beast? I do not know what you're talking yes, about. You do. You also realize the significance of the appearance of Miss Lane with that huge dog no. and animal, don't you? No, you no, no. I... Just as I suspect. What does this mean? But the thought is too horrible for you to voice. Stop torturing me. You're being very foolish, Marie. By your very silence, you're bringing about. You're doomed. What do you mean, monsieur? Don't you see what is happening? Your place is being taken. Already you've been supplanted by Miss Lane. No, monsieur. When Dr. Van Dane has no further use for you, you know what that can mean, don't you? Yes. <laughs> then you must do something about it. You must act quickly. What? What is that to do? I am getting that young woman out of here at once. Meantime, you can call the police. If you tell them everything, everything you know about Dr. Oh. Mendane, there is still a chance for your salvation. What? That is my only chance? Your only chance. But you must do this. At once. Well, Lamont, did you succeed in getting the information you wanted? I did talk to Marie. Are you satisfied now that this is a perfectly safe place for me to be? Quite the contrary, Margot. I'm taking you out of here at once. Come on. What are you saying? I found out something about Dr. Van Dane. If it's true as I think it is, your life is in danger every moment that you're here. Come oh, you can be so melodramatic. Margot, I'm giving you cold, hard facts. Do you remember the conversation that we had with Joe, our guide, about the people who'd been killed by a giant wolf? Yes. Do you remember his believing that the animal was really a human being? Oh, you mean that werewolf story? Yes. Oh. Lamont, are you trying to tell me that there may be something to that story? Yes, perhaps. Oh, that's fantastic. You're just making up a story in order to get me out. I'm not making up a story, Margo. Oh, no. no. What's the matter, Margo? You're trembling. Oh, don't. Why don't they stop the howling? Margo, why should their howling bother you? I don't know. I just hate the sound of dogs. Why don't they stop? Margo, I, I don't know what's happened to you, but this thing is part of it. What are you talking about? This, this fear of dogs. Oh, dog, no. You've never felt that way before. Oh, yes. Then your irritation at my being here and your nervous behavior, the way you're facing the room right now. You've got to get out. You've got to get out. I'm taking you out, Margo. Oh, no. No, I'm so alone. Margo, listen to me. We're leaving here together. Oh, no, we're not. You have no right to tell me what to do. I'm sorry, Margo. You're coming with me. Even if I had to carry you out you here. You barely a hand on me out. Oh, I'm sorry, Lamont. I lost my head, I guess. I didn't know what I was doing. Of course I'll come with you. Come right now. Oh, that's better. Thank you, Margo. Will you get my coat, please, in that closet? Well, surely. I don't see them in here, Margo. Are you sure they're in here? <laughs> Margo! Margo, let me out of here. Next time, you'll know enough to let me have my way. Margo! Goodbye, Lamar! Margo! Oh. Thomas, 
find the doctor. Let him know that I'm free. Is it for me, Miss Lane? Oh, I'm so glad that you're here, Dr. Van I was worried about you. Really? Yes, I heard the howling of dogs. I was afraid that you might have been in trouble. You need never fear for me. I am too clever for them. Much too clever. Doctor, you seem upset. What's wrong? I just had the most unfortunate experience. Someone I trusted proved the health disloyal. There is? Yes. She was about to telephone the police. About to betray me. I see. She will never make the call? Never. But come. We have things to do, young lady. The night is short. Time is precious. Come. You have a mission to perform. Van Dane. 